Today, Marie is going to show us a new to me way to make sauerkraut. I make sauerkraut all the time, but I use a crock. Marie's grandma has a nifty way using mason jars. I was able to get this recipe from my mom. I was super excited because I'd done a little bit of the crock kind of stuff uh -huh. with Emma line before, and, and I loved the result, but the ease of this method really appealed to me. So the first step is just to go ahead and pull off any, any dead or bad looking leaves and to pull out the core of your okay. cabbage there. I'll help you get it ready here then. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use the mandolin to slice it really thinly. Um, I'm gonna do about like one fourth of an inch slices, maybe a little bit smaller than a fourth of an inch. The finer it is, the easier it is for it to break down. I still there it is. cut them in half the majority of the time. Okay, then I can do that. That's what I usually do. Am I taking up all the space? You are just fine. Oh, it makes beautiful shreds. How about if I start grabbing it into your bowl? Sure. And now if you're using one of these, be very careful because it's really easy to take a knuckle off. Your goal is to get your pieces shredded up nice and thin and fine. <laughs> Which then at the end, sometimes it's difficult. So sometimes with those last little bits, I'll just do them by hand. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can do that for you. That would be perfect. So at this point, we've got it all cut up. It's got the nice, fine little layers. Yeah. You could do that with a knife. I mean, it could even be bigger like these are, and it would be no big deal. But I really like getting those nice, thin bits. They're going to mm -hmm. ferment a little bit easier. Um, and then we add three tablespoons of salt to it, massage it in. You're trying to kind of break up the cell structure of your cabbage here. Think of bruising it, getting those juices to start flowing within the cabbage. There we go. And then after we're done with that, we're gonna allow it to rest for 20 minutes. Twenty minutes has now elapsed and we're ready for the next stage of Marie's sauerkraut. So the next step of this is that it goes directly into jars. This much should do about two jars worth. We're going to see if that's what it does. I brought a third one just in just case. case because every time it's a little bit different. So you just want to fill your jars with it. You can see that with the salt and the little bit of mixing that we did, it ended up breaking down. Well, yeah, you can see the juice yes, there's liquid down there, in, there in the bottom, which is perfect for sauerkraut. That's mm -hmm. what the bruising does. So should we be tamping as we go? Yeah, so go ahead and tamp as we go. And that's gonna create more juices because all this does is give us a little more bruising. Oh, and it packs in there beautifully. Good, good. And we'll just go ahead and take turns with the tamper. Yeah. The big thing is you want enough liquid to go over your cabbage. You want it to be nice and soupy. 
Oh, it's looking beautiful. So you could use a canning funnel at this point if you want, but we have the wide mouth mason jars, so it's almost easier to just do it like this. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what this method does. I've never made sauerkraut in anything but a crock. No? Yeah. Well, I've had some of those little fermenting lid things before, right. but I prefer the crock so far. Sure. So I'm excited to see how this turns out for you. Well, and I have had really good um, results with the crock before, mm -hmm. but you know, my grandma, she was amazing. Well, and this, we anticipate this being a really good recipe because Marie's family has a heritage in making sauerkraut. Yep, my grandma, her um, parents owned a German delicatessen. Yeah, so, so. Uh, you, you think that the German delicatessen owners can make the pretty good sauerkraut. Good crap, right. Yeah. Oh, look how much liquid there is in that. Well, we like a good sauerkraut around our place. I may have never been to Germany or lived there, but with a name like Hofmeister, I better like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at those juices. I'm all the way to the top. So I'm oh, assuming that's good. about where we need to get. So yeah. Right there. So we do have a little bit more. We do have start. a little more. I'll give you this and I'll start packing in this one for so you. So now this one, I won't can. I'll just take it and put it in the refrigerator and we'll use it right away. Oh, yeah. Because it won't be all the way full by the time we get it all in there. But you can, st as long as the cabbage is fully submersed under liquid, then that prevents any mold and you should end up with just as good of a fermentation, even without having it entirely full. Right, right. Let's just get this little bit down in here. I'll tamp this one in. Perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a tray for us to put these in. Now that we have our cabbage all tamped down into our jars, it has the liquid all the way up to about uh, half inch. maybe a half inch head space. Mm -hmm. And then this one, of course, is just partial, but that's Those fine. Leftovers. Yep. So with these ones, we are going to go ahead and put the lids on them. I forgot to grab a lid for this one, so I'll grab that a little bit later. But you want to put it on just really, really loosely. Right. Because you want there to be able to be some air that escapes well, as mm -hmm. well as uh, you want the liquid to escape. And then you want to make sure that you either put it in a bathtub that isn't being used or a sink or something mm -hmm. like that. Or my personal preference is to use a cookie sheet with just a higher lip so that it can catch any liquid that's going to come out. In, and then you check it regularly for about three weeks. Okay. And if there's any mold that you notice, go ahead and pull it out. And at that point, it's probably ready for you to go ahead and can. Generally speaking, you don't run into it. The big thing is keeping that liquid level above exactly. the level of the cabbage. And then we'll just go ahead and can it. It's been about a month and it is now time to open up our sauerkraut and see how it is and can it. Right. Now, I think if I was to do it over again, I would stop at the three week mark because we did end up with a little bit of mold that I had to take off earlier. Okay. But there's still so much good sauerkraut here and it's such an easy method. This has been four weeks. Right? Yes, it's beautiful. Now, it smells lovely. All we have to do, like seriously, is put in just a little bit of hot water to get it up to the headspace. Yep which is half of an inch. Okay. We and then put our lids on it and put it directly in our boiling water bath. You want to put it in while the water is still cool because the jar is room temperature. So okay. you want the water room temperature. Both of them will come up to temperature Together. at the same time. And then we are going to process them for 20 minutes in the boiling water bath if you are at sea level. For us, it's going to be 25. If you have any questions about how to use a boiling water bath, go ahead and look at our canning basics videos. 
And if you're unsure how altitude affects your processing time, make sure that you check out our altitude canning basics video. Our boiling water bath has finished processing, so now we're going to pull it out and see how it looks. And so easy. I'm really in love with this method just because of the ease of it. I love making sauerkraut all kinds of different ways, but I do think that this method has some really good benefits. I think this method for doing it in bulk is uh -huh. going to be especially beneficial for you because you'll be I able to so. do so much, get them prepped and into the jars right. and able to sit. So coming with all the cabbage coming mm -hmm. straight from your garden, this method is, is highly recommended. I think so too, because I could have like 20, 30 jars all lined up on exactly. the counter doing what they need to do, um, as opposed to having to have more and more crops. Right, right, because the crops would get spendy if you had to get very oh, many of those. Yeah, and they're, yeah. you know, storing them, and you wouldn't have them going all the time, right. and so you'd have to store them. Yeah, but, but the small batches, that works great. Exactly. If you're enjoying these videos that we're making for you, make sure that you click the subscribe button.